The True Light, featuring El Sayyid, El Imam Isa, El Hadi, El Mahdi. What about Minister Falcon? What's he doing now? Is he teaching or what? Right now, he's not a teacher. He's not doing. Nothing. He's not a teacher. He's a lecturer. There's a big difference between a teacher and a lecturer. Minister Louis Farrakhan just takes things that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was teaching and lectures about them. You see that? And there's a difference when you sit down and set up an Arabic school and a Quranic school and a scripture school and you start to teach people something. That's totally different than going to a college forum, standing up and talking about economics and how black people got to work together and how much money we got to raise to do this. That's not teaching, that's lecturing. So Minister Farrakhan is a very good lecturer. He's just not a teacher. He was a student of a good teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Because I listened to him talk, and after an hour of listening to him talk, I realized that he didn't say anything. All he was doing was elaborating on things that happened. I think, like, he's a nice brother, he's a good speaker, he means well, but he's just not a teacher. Black people now want to be taught. They don't want to be just spoken to. They want to learn something now. They want to clear the smoke. So what is his purpose? You have to ask him that. <laughs> you can't ask me what is Minister Farrakhan's purpose. You have to go to him and ask him that. You're saying you can't serve two masters. What I see, I'm in that predicament. Here I am. I work for this man. But in reality, what I'm trying to do is, you know, save up. Get, get myself something. Because, like you say, time's going to come and he's going to look at me and get tired of seeing me reading something that goes totally against his beliefs. He's going to get tired of me and say, okay, that's enough. Don't fear that, because if that was not the case, why did Jesus talk in parables? Jesus talked in parables because there was times when he just had to say things that he only wanted certain people to understand. So he compromised at times. See, even the Messiah himself had to compromise. And he talked in parables because he could have just as well talked straight out. Like I have a quote. Well, let me see. Let's take Matthews, right? And turn to the 22nd chapter. What verse? If I don't give you a verse, what does that mean? <laughs> okay. You should know me by now for all these years. <laughs> and Jesus answered and spoke unto them again by parables. Here it is. Jesus is getting ready to give some people a parable. Now watch. Go ahead. And say, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fartlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants, and entreated them spitefully, and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burnt up their city. Then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bitten were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how comest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servant, Cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. I stop. A very common quote in that, the 14th verse. Many are called, and few are chosen. Every Christian uses that quote. You heard that quote before? Now, now there's a whole big story that preceded that from 22, 1, all the way to 22, 14. Now, if I turned around and asked somebody, what is Jesus talking about here? What is this parable about? What would you say? I have to read it over and... Uh, well, let's read it again. Let's see if we can find out. What parable is he teaching here? Go ahead. And Jesus answered and spoke unto them again by parables, and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. What does that mean? I, I understand what he's saying now. He's saying that, um, basically, in plain words, he's saying, hey, I'm asking you to come, and you're saying... Yeah, right I'll answer it eventually. Right, right. The point I'm trying to make is, did Jesus compromise? 
as far as he spoke in parables here for certain people. You know who he was speaking for? He was speaking for people here who understood the scripture. Anybody who was not one of his fathers or not one of the Pharisees or Sanhedrin who didn't study the scripture will never catch what this parable is talking about. The answer to the parable is found in Isaiah 61.10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my creator. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. Notice he acknowledges the dress of a bride and a bridegroom as a symbol of salvation, as a symbol of purity, righteousness, right? And in this parable, the whole thing is that they speak of the kingdom. What did he say? The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king. The kingdom of heaven is what's mentioned in the books of Revelation 21 and 22, coming down out of heaven like a bride adorned for Christ. You see? They're speaking about the dress of a bride, first of all. What do brides wear? White. White. Long white robes. Even in America where they became Christians, they wear this. Long white robes and a face veil. This is a traditional dress of a bride in America, correct? No. And the husband wears a white tuxedo, a typical dress. So the bridegroom here, mentioned in 22, this whole chapter is all talking about how people do not want to put on their white robes. And how they will be thrust into, even though they're going to come on the last day, they're going to be thrust into darkness. Now, read it again and you'll see it. He likened, first of all, the kingdom of heaven to this king. So that's the kingdom of heaven they talk about. If you don't read the first two, like a lot of Christian preachers, and start at three, four, and five, you think they're talking about a real king. When they're not, they're talking about a kingdom of heaven. Now go ahead. And, and he sent forth his servants and called them that were bidden to the wedding. And they and would they, not come. And they didn't come. You all are being told to come home, put on your wife. And you're not coming. People who are worthy of it are not coming. Go ahead. And again he sent forth other servants, a saying, Tell them which are bitten, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fartlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. And you start to think this is really a marriage. If you don't realize what verse 2 is talking about, this is symbolic of their heaven. It is symbolic of the kingdom of heaven. And it's symbolic of people who were supposed to be worthy, who missed it the first time. The first time was when Anwar Elijah Muhammad came and beckoned them to come into the kingdom of heaven and they rejected. Now he's saying again, here we are again calling you to come into the kingdom of heaven. Watch what happens. Number five. But they made light of it. They don't make a joke out of coming home and putting on your wife. One day I'll be in my wife. I have to find more confirmation. We show you all through the scriptures over and over again about wife, about your jealousy, about your dress of the bride. You say one day, one day, you make light of it. And? And went their ways. Go ahead. One to, to there. One to his farm, another to his merchandise. That's your jobs you're talking about. I got to take care of myself and my family. I got to finish school. I got to go do this. I'm going to go get my own land and do my own thing. Why should I move in there? I can get my own land and build my own farm and do my own. They're telling you about that. Go ahead. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Go ahead. But when the king heard of the, thereof, he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies. Now remember the king is who? The king is symbolic of heaven. Mm -hmm. The white man, now when you go out and work amongst them, they are called the remnant. And they do what? That's number six. Okay. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. This is what they'll do to you. They will kill you. They are killing us. They kill in Vietnam. They kill in Iran. They kill in Iraq. They kill in Syria. They kill in Sudan. They kill in Ethiopia. They kill to Ghana. They kill in Nigeria. They kill in South Africa. They kill us. We still worship and praise them and work for them. Still make them rich. What else does he say? But when the king heard thereof... And remember, the king is heaven. That's what number two teaches. The king is heaven. Go ahead. He was wroth. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers. That's the angels who come forth from heaven. Mentioned in Revelation 22. Again. See, because they're talking about the kingdom. Remember, they, see I'm saying uh, how when you read the Bible, if you don't follow, you can miss what they're talking about. If you don't read number two, you don't know that they're really talking about heaven and, and angels. You think they're talking about men armies and how these armies killed. They killed the wicked. Go ahead. And burned up their city. 
And it tells you we no longer going to destroy the world by water, but more over by fire. Fire. They're talking about judgment day here. That the angels are going to come down from heaven with fire and destroy the wicked city of Babylon. Go ahead. Then says he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Then the angels say, okay, so now that we've stopped the devil, come on into the tabernacle of the Most High. Get ready for the wedding. And what do y'all say? Yep. Go ye therefore into the highways. And as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So I take off my white robe, I become Dr. York, and I go into the street to try to reach people. And try to bring them home to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because y'all are coming to me, listening, and still not coming home. Then you complain about that. <laughs> Why is he Dr. York? Why ain't you in the mosque? One time I was out in a club, and a guy walked up to me and said, uh, Aren't you Imam Isa? I said, Yes. He said, uh, Why are you in this club? I said, I'm here with you. <laughs> I mean, what am I in here for? What are you in here for? I'm in here for you. <laughs> he said, oh. Walked with a real dumb look on his face. He just said, oh, oh. You know that sound Negroes make when they get confused? Oh, oh. <laughs> Go ahead. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found. Our brothers in the trains and the buses and the schools walk in the streets. They're doing everything to go out to get you. Go ahead. Both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a certain man, saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. You know, people sitting in that room right now know you know you're supposed to have on white. You understand? You know it. You know right from wrong now. All right. What does it say about him? And he says unto him, friend, how camest thou in, in hither not having a wedding garment? Why aren't y'all dressed right when y'all know it's right? I got sisters I see sitting out there that's been here, coming here for years. Still ain't putting on their white. Still ain't putting on their veil. Why? This is what the heavenly is talking about. Why? Go ahead. And he was speechless. There's nothing, because there's no answer when we ask you that, right? Well, I, 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 uh, 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 <laughs> I'm not ready yet. Because I have people say, hey, Mom, I don't have a jello of beer. I said, outside. They tell him, I said, give him a jello of beer. They wear it twice, then they take the jello be off. Say so y'all full of it. Go ahead. <laughs> then says the king to the servants. Remember the king is heaven. Can you keep that in mind now? Go ahead. Bind him hand and foot and take him away uh -huh. and cast him into the outer darkness. That's what's going to happen. This is heaven rejecting people because they reject the preparation for the supper of the wedding of the lamb. Go ahead. There shall be weeping and gashing of teeth. Doesn't that sound like Matthew 24 again? No. Uh -huh. Yes. For many are called, but few are chosen. Now you understand <laughs> what that little phrase, many are called and few are chosen. Many people get it, it turned on to the light, but they don't want to take off their traditional clothes and garb themselves in righteousness. The first thing they told Muhammad is to rise up and purify your garment. You had to stop wearing the garbs of the Meccans and put on white. And whenever they know so funny, when the so-called Arabs made a movie called Muhammad, you ever heard that movie, Muhammad Rasulullah? They always showed you his followers dressed in all white throughout the movie. All the people that opposed them from the different tribes of the Croatia and everything had on multicolors. Now they got scholars from different parts of the Arab world to come to do the script for that movie, Muhammad Rasulullah. And a lot of Muslims rejected the movie because they said they were going to depict an image of Rasulullah. They were so caught up on such tribute things, they didn't see that when they all got together on a subject, they came out with the followers of Muhammad all wore long white robes. Now you go to Saudi Arabia, they got on gray, gray jubba or jalabiyah. They got on green ones. Egypt, they got on plaid ones. Sudan, the sisters are wearing yellows and orange and speckles. And, but when they all came together on that movie, they all had enough sense to see that back in Muhammad's time, they wore white. Then they say they follow the example of Muhammad, and you go to a Sunni Muslim mosque for prayer, and everybody got on different colors. So when they cast you into triple darkness on the day of judgment, because then you won't be allowed into the kingdom, turn to Revelation. Now what chapter were we just reading? 22 in Matthews. Now, that chapter 22 of Matthews mathematically go to 21 of Revelation. Because 22 <clears throat> is the end of the world. That's the last book of Revelation. Go ahead. What do you read? I've read it a thousand times. It tells you about a new heaven coming down. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city 
New Jerusalem coming down from a law out of heaven. That's what Matthew 22 is talking about, this kingdom. Go ahead. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. See the same words? Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Go to Isaiah 62, 5. It'll talk about the 144,000 and what they must be inside this new kingdom of heaven. For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall they sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall thy creator rejoice over thee. <laughs> See how the scriptures all link right back in? No. We told you that the 144,000 are going to have to be virgins, not defiled by the harlots. They have not drunk of the wrath of the fornications of the harlots. We got to raise those kids that way. You can't do that outside. You're a young man with a happy business, and if things are going right. What happens when your wife has kids and you got them out in the world? And they get tempted by the delicacies of this holland and of the book of 18. And you've corrupted their life because you had an opportunity to make your children pure. Stop thinking so much about yourselves and what you want and start thinking about the future of our world. Because it's in your hands. The Arabs can't do nothing. They want to modernize. They want more modern cars and technology in Arabia and Sudan and Egypt. They don't want Islam. They don't want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't want to worship. They want discotheques and new movies and modern hotels and all kinds of things like that. They have turned away from the path of Allah. It's in your hands to revive it. And you're messing around stalling while time is running out. Read on. Back of Revelations? Yes, 21. Mm. It should be at verse 3. Right. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Allah is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and Allah himself shall be with them and be their creator. And Allah shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his creator, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, and the unbelieving, and the abominable, and the murderers, and the whoremongers, and the sorcerers, and the idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven veils, full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. See how it goes right back to the same thing? It keeps repeating itself. So it tells you it's the marriage is about, but yet you'll still, you'll come to the marriage, you'll come to the classes, and still refuse to put on your wife. Come unprepared to the wedding. Knowing better. Jump from that to Revelation 22, the end of the world. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. In Islam, we call this kawthar. Multiple times through the Quran, Allah Ta'ala speaks about a country in paradise under which beneath flows rivers. So the Quran begins to explain these rivers when the Bible stops here. See, it is the end of the Bible. And that's how you know the Quran was a continuation. Because in the Quran, whenever it describes paradise, it picks up this philosophy. It picks up this doctrine, this fact. And makes it clear. Go ahead. Clear as crystal. The crystal? Go ahead. Proceeding out of the throne of Allah That's and... right out the Quran. Mm -hmm. And of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruit, and yield her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of Allah and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no, <clears throat> no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the creed of Allah giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord of the Holy Prophet, the Lord, the creator of the Holy Prophets, sent his angel to show unto his servants the things... Please correct, stop right there. Not correct, I want to point out something. Make note that in this last chapter of Revelation, they're talking about the Lamb in number one. And then by the time they get down to number six, they say, 
his holy prophets. Right? No. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul, none of these men were prophets. It's not talking about what they came out to teach. They're talking about what the prophets, Muhammad, Moses, Abraham, Isaac, David, Solomon, Lot, what these men, Jacob, Ishmael, what they were teaching. Repeat that one again. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord, our creator of the holy prophets, sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come, shortly be done. Now stop and go back to Revelation chapter 1 so we can find out about this statement. After the prophethood is finished, the last thing to come to man will be an angel. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which the Lord gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. You see, that that's the exact same thing what's in the first book of the Revelation. It's the exact same verse that's in the last book of the Revelation. To show man that nothing has been taken away from this. Nothing has been removed from this. This final revelation for Jesus. Go ahead. And Number he, seven. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecies of this book. You see? Not the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Not of Corinthians and Galatians. But of this book, the book of Revelation. And they you know they do in number seven, the first line. Does anybody have a, a Bible with two colors in it? You know the red and black lettering? Does anybody in there have it? Anybody have a King James Version? You notice red. that the first thing, behold, I come quickly, is in red. And they say that all those things said in red comes from Christ, the Messiah, Jesus. Right? No. Uh -uh. Right there then, when he said, behold, I come quickly, he's talking. Then he said, Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of this, what? Of this book. Not of Matthew, of Mark, book. Luke, and John, and Galatians, and Hebrews, and all the books that they made up after that. Jesus is telling people to keep the prophecies of the book of Revelations, the Injil, his book. How do you know it's his book? Revelation chapter 1 tells you it's his book. Read it. This is the revelations of Jesus the Messiah, which the Lord gave unto him to show unto his people or his servants things which must shortly come to pass, right? No. And sent it in. Signified it by, by his, his angel. <laughs> right here, repeats it. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true, and the sustainer of law of the holy prophet sent his angel to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Confirming it. Then he says, Behold, I come quickly. Why? Because Islam believes that in the latter day, the Messiah Jesus would return. They acknowledge it throughout their hadith. If you ask any Muslim from any part of the world, they say yes. Jesus is going to return. The Messiah is the end of the world. First the Mahdi would come, and then the Messiah. Well, the Mahdi, Muhammad Ahmed, has already come into Sudan in the 18th century, 1845 to 1888. He's already been here. And Islam and the Islamic world knows the Messiah is coming. Well, Jesus said right there, I'll come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecies of this book. Not of any other book there. Only the Injil of the Quran mentioned. It doesn't mention nothing about the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Go ahead, what else? And I, John, saw these things and heard and them. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen... I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Now, not Jesus. John was supposed to believe. This is John, one of Jesus' disciples. He was supposed to believe that no one should be worshipped but Jesus, according to them, right? No. Yet, he fell at the angel's feet to worship. That could not have been a part of their doctrine back then. <laughs> to worship Jesus. That couldn't have been otherwise John receiving the revelations for Jesus was so disobedient that he fell at the feet of an angel to worship him. <laughs> he didn't know he couldn't do that. He was told only to worship Jesus. No way. You can't get to the heaven except by Jesus. He didn't know the difference between Jesus and his angel. Of course he did. This angel walked him through the revelations and showed him Jesus in his glory. So he knew the difference when he fell down to worship an angel. So that was not a part of Christian doctrine back then. All that doctrine you got today is Paul's stuff. From the fake Christ, bar Jesus, that they worship. Go ahead. Then says he unto me, See thou do it not. Meaning, don't worship me. For I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, 
and of them which keep the sayings of he this said, book. He said, there's an angel telling him that I am a human being and of the lineage of the prophets. Now, that's a strange angel, isn't it? Most angels come straight from heaven. This angel tells this man, John, that I am of the prophets. I am from the family line of the prophets. I am your fellow servant. I am a Muslim too. I have to pray too. Don't worship me. I know the incident happened. I saw it. Go ahead. And of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship Allah. Which book? Revelations. In <laughs> oh, I, oh I, I thought you meant Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. No, this is a single. Don't say to keep the prophecy of those books. Go ahead. And he said unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecies of this book. Don't hide the, the meaning of this book, the book of Revelation. He keeps telling you the last book of what book to follow. Go ahead. For the time is at hand. Okay. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And I showed you back in Isaiah, righteous is putting on that garb. Putting on that garb of righteousness. That's what it says. Go ahead. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the now, tree of life. Now, here Jesus is saying, he was here in the beginning and he'll be here in the end. But then he ends up by saying in 14, not blessed are they that do my commandments. Blessed are they that do his commandments. His commandments. He's still giving honor to the heavenly father, even in the last book of Revelation. He didn't say, blessed are they who do my will. Blessed are they who praise me. Blessed are they who get to heaven by me. He said, blessed are they that do His commandments. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The heavenly Father's commandments. What commandments? The commandments of the scriptures. Go ahead. That they may have right to the tree of life. And may enter in through the gate. Now what's so important about the tree of life? Go back to Genesis. We'll see what's so important about the tree of life. Go all the way back to Genesis chapter 3, uh -huh. verse 21. Unto Adam also and to his wife did Allah make coats of skins and clothed them. The importance of clothes and having their bodies covered again is and, here. And then what he said? And Allah said, Behold, the man has become as one of us. Now that the man has violated the laws of heaven and betook of the fruit, he has become like one of us, what? To know good and evil. He knows right and wrong. And now at least he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So what is the tree of life a symbol of? Life everlasting. Revelation 22, 14 tells you that that tree of life will give you eternal life. You will live forever. Because man has now got willpower and he is doing evil, put him out of his garden so he doesn't be taken of this tree and live forever. Go all the way back to Revelation 22, 14 and let's see what they say. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. So now in being obedient to the commandments and following the prophecies of this book, what is he giving us back? He's giving us back life. right to the tree of life. Giving us back right to eternal life. To live forever, the Bible teaches. Go ahead. And many enter in through the gates into the city. What city? Christus. The tabernacle of the Most High. He didn't say, sit there and wait for something to come out of heaven. He told you to walk into these gates. Come inside the city. <laughs> Go ahead. For without are dogs. That's right. And sorcerers. You listen hard enough, you hear barks in this neighborhood. <laughs> sorcerers just mean devil worship and demonology, the pentagram, all kind of satanic worship. If you don't believe me, get off in West Forth and walk around the village one day. You see devil worshipers, proud of it. All your rock groups and hot metal groups and... Go ahead. <laughs> and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters. And whosoever loveth... Poor Catholics don't know they're idol worshippers, you know. The average Mohammedan Muslim doesn't know they're an idol worshipper. They don't know they're worshipping Muhammad. They just added his name in every prayer and every dua and everything they do. They don't know they're worshipping him. They're the idlers. They're going to hell too. They just call themselves Muslims. Go ahead. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. 
And that's what we're here. Not in the synagogues no more. Because the synagogues was over in Judea. Not over there no more. We're over here. In the books of St. John, chapter 16, verse 1, he says that his disciples back then are going to be put out of the synagogues. Right? No. But over here, Jesus said, I sent my angel to testify in the churches. I'm coming to you Christian people who are inside churches worshiping statues and idols and demons and thinking you're worshiping the Heavenly Father. I'm reaching in the churches to pull you out. What does it say? I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. That's because they say that he had prevailed because no one was worthy to open the seal. What they say? The root of David prevailed to open and loose the seal thereof. That matches Daniel's also. Go ahead. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. What are we talking about again? A bride and the dress of the 144,000, the cloak that the Lord put on him back in Genesis, the wearing of the white, covering the body up, the woman with the veil like she's prepared for the wedding, getting ready for the new city that comes down to them. What did Jesus say in the Lord's Prayer? Say the first couple of verses of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy is thy name. Go ahead. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be Thy kingdom done. come. Thy will be done. Where? On earth. He said the kingdom of heaven was going to come down to earth for you. And he's telling you how to look when it comes. Be prepared, he says. Be adorned like a bride. Oh, how does a bride dress? Long white dress, white veil. That's the sin law over the whole world. Ain't got nothing to do with religion. The Buddhists do that. Go ahead. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, Allah shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Now, that's what John says, who was guided by the angel, Mikhail, right up to the churches of the present day. No. They're talking about what Paul said, and what Paul said, and what Paul said, and they're adding to the book. They're adding to this book. Jesus said, get your knowledge out of this book. Out of the book of Revelations about him. His book. The book. Not the books. Not the disciples. The prophets. The prophecies. He said he did not come to change the law of Moses, but to fulfill it. Not alter it. Not modernize it. Not change it. Men are altering it. You got these fake preachers and teachers, these antichrists, who are going around in Jesus' name, like he said they were, preaching in his name. You got Muslims going out preaching in Muhammad's name, and they're the biggest demons in the world. Cigarettes smoking, they're not dressed in the, the garb of a bride. Go ahead. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, Allah shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written and in they the take book. your name out of the book of life, which is a link to the tree of life, you do not have eternal life. When death comes to you, you will die. <clears throat> You will not be transformed into a spiritual being. You will not be made back into the form of an angel. Go ahead. He which testifieth these things says, Surely I come quickly. Amen. That's the end of the book. Now they add a little chapter. So even come. so, come Lord. Now this is not Jesus, see? Because Jesus just ended and said, <coughs> Amen. Amen. And then someone did exactly what he said, Don't do. They said, well, come on, Lord. And that's what preachers do. They quote the Bible, then they add their opinion. The Bible just said, Amen. Then they said, even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. They added, then they put another Amen. They added another verse. Two Amens in one book. Jesus said, don't add to the book. Don't add to the prophecy. And in the end of the same book, what did the, they do? Add another verse. So, all those men... I've been cut away from the tree of life. Don't be looking for Matthews, Mark, Luke, and John in heaven because you're not going to see them. And Paul is in hell already, so you ain't going to worry about him. We now have for your listening pleasure a complete set of the True Light tapes. There are now more than 24 hours of answers to the questions that have boggled the minds of humanity. For more than 20 years, the eminent master, Imam Isa, has answered all questions put before him, from skeptics to true believers, Jews, Christians, Muslims, 
All have increased the understanding of the words of the Most High by listening to the True Light. Where can I get the True Light tape? You can get the True Light from your local Ansar representative that you see dressed in white. Or come down to the original tents of Kedar, 719 Bushwick Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. I still go to church and I've asked my minister many questions from the True Light tape that he cannot answer. I've listened to Jimmy Swigert and other ministers, but I find that Elimam Issa is the only one who can explain the book of Revelation. I've been a Jehovah Witness since I was a child, and I thought I had a monopoly on the truth. But I listened to the true light tapes on the radio and have come to understand the truth about the life of Jesus. I listen to your broadcast every week, and as a result of the true light tapes, I am now a follower of Imam Issa. Yes, the true light tapes do make a difference. The true light can change your life. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And now, let us return to our broadcast. Now, what's the next chapter of this book? The Quran. I mean, what's the next chapter? Revelation. Is there Revelation 23 here? No. So the book ended, right? Right. And in the last chapter, he told us what books to rely on, which was the book, this book, this prophecy, this book, this prophecy, the prophets, not my disciples, not my apostles, this book, this prophecy, the book, the prophecy. But men, right after this, made their own books, their own prophets, their own disciples, their own apostles, and had deceived the whole world in the name of Jesus Christ. They went out into the world and deceived everybody using Christ's name. And then when that comforter did come, who Jesus said he would send, which was Muhammad, they didn't accept the Ahmed. Jesus said, I will send a comforter. That's the Holy Spirit. He said, even the Holy Spirit. Look at St. John's chapter 15, the last verse. Because people just be talking. Read it. 15 or 16? The last verse in 15. Last verse in 15. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Now go back. And read 26. But when the Comforter is come, okay. whom I will send unto you from the Father, what's the word? Even the Spirit of Truth. Even. The Comforter is not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> he will be accompanied by the Holy Spirit. Even the Holy Spirit. Or even the Spirit of Truth which proceeds from the Father. So just like when Jesus was baptized and the Spirit proceeded out of heaven and came down upon Him and He became anointed as a Savior to the world, thus this other Comforter will also have say in the Quran, in the Surah Al-Layla Al-Qadri. What does it teach us? Tanazalu. The angels came down. Malaikati waruhu. All of the angels came down from heaven that night. Ain't that what it teaches in the night of power of the Quran? So and it says, and Aruhu was there. Who is Aruhu? The Holy Spirit. Ruhu Qudus, they call it. So Muhammad himself was the Ahmed or the Comforter. And he too had the Holy Spirit come down to him on the 19th night of the month of Ramadan. And he was filled of the Holy Spirit. This is the Comforter that Jesus said. Read it again. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of Truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. And Muhammad, Wallahi, in the Quran, Jesus is mentioned more than any other prophet. Muslims don't say that, you know. I don't think most of them even know it. Jesus in the Quran is called the Word of Allah. He's called the Spirit of Allah. He's called the Messiah from Allah. <laughs> he spoke from the cradle. He will speak in youth and in old age. He performed miracles. He, he turned a bird into life, prepared a table of food from nothing. He was born a mother who conceived through the Holy Spirit, Blessed Mother Mary. Jesus is the only prophet 
in the whole Quran that's glorified that much. The Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala glorifies Jesus, glorifies His holy name. One place they call Him al Messiah. Other place they call Him Isa, the Savior. They got His name glorified, the Messiah, the Savior. The Quran is glorifying His holy name like the prophecy said. And then it says, lastly what? And ye shall also, I'm sorry, and ye also shall bear witness. Stop. What did Muhammad come and tell us to take? Shahada. What do we say? Ashhadu la ilaha illallah. I bear witness. <laughs> the first thing every Muslim says. Ashhadu la ilaha illallah. I bear witness that nothing would exist if Allah didn't create it. Now what it says right there? Uh -huh. And ye shall bear witness. Because ye have been with me from the beginning. You know that Jesus is the Messiah. You know he is the Savior. Muslims try to play dumb to that. Then if you read number 16 of St. John's, which y'all can do on your own, it'll reiterate the whole story of the coming of the Comforter. Um, when you said uh, we should wear white, now, in my case, if I come to work in white, I have no more job. Plain and simple. The minute I show up, you're going to say go. Well, let's see what Matthew chapter 6 says about that. It's going to talk about, it's going to speak about people worrying about what they're going to eat and what they're going to drink. And from where with are they going to be clothed? Go ahead. You know what I'm going to do you, right? Yeah, you want me to get that one pick up from there where it speaks to that? Or? Yes, go to the one where it speaks to that. Okay. This is me, Lord, my rain. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust does corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. See what if, you just did? If you start worrying about how you're going to feed yourself, that's where your heart's going to be. At your job, at your work. That's where 24 of uh, the same Matthews chapter 6 verse 24 says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one. He'll hold on to one of his, he'll hold on to something like his job. And despise the other. And the next thing the white man tell you is you can't have off Friday to come to Juma. For Friday assembly. That's the next thing. You can't be off on Friday. And the Quran tells you that you must leave all work and come to the prayer on Friday. Then you have a choice between what Allah commands you to do and what the devil. And the Quran tells you, the devil said, I'm going to get them. I'm going to lie away because I'm going to make evil fair seeming to them. And I'm going to get all of them ilal mukhlasina, except the mukhlasina, except the pure ones. Everybody else I'm going to get because I'm going to tempt them and they're going to fall. And they get us. He'll make us offers of money, wealth, success, all kind of things. Go ahead on. <clears throat> The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thine whole body shall be full of light. Stop looking from the two physical eyes and start looking from that one third eye, the single eye, the spiritual eye. When you start looking from the spiritual eye, then your body is full of the pure light. As long as you're looking from those physical eyes, you're only going to see things that you can see, hear, taste, smell, and feel. Material wealth, material gain, a better paint job, a better car, a better house, better looking clothes. But if you look from the spiritual eye, the third eye, the single eye, your light will be on the inside. The body will become the temple and you will furnish it with beautiful things from the scriptures. Go ahead. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve Allah and mammon. Mammon it, means wealth. Go ahead. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought of your life. Don't think about your life. What ye shall eat. Where's your food going to come from? Or what ye shall drink. Where are you going to get your drink from? Nor yet for your body. Go ahead. What ye should put on. Don't worry about your clothes. How are you going to get clothes? Is not the life more than meat? Isn't life eternal more than the food that you eating? And the body than raiment? And the purified body more than the garbs that you wear? Behold. Behold, behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into bonds, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. You don't see no birds planting no food and going out with plows and digging them up, do you? But the heavenly Father provides for them. Go ahead. Are you not, are you not much better than they? Because didn't he create you as a guardian over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over everything that creepeth upon earth? Didn't the Bible say that? No. He provides for them, but man doesn't want to be provided for by him. 
man. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic unto his stature? And even if you think you can do something to help yourself, <laughs> or you can change the course of nature, you can't anyway, he says. And why, and why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. What is this about, I like nice yellow outfits and plaid garbs. I like beautiful colored things. Why must I wear bland white? <laughs> That's what people think. Well, I mean, in Africa, we wore loud colors and pretty flowers. He said, what are you worried about? I gave the colors to the lilies of the field. <laughs> what about your raiments? Better put on white, stop jiving. 29. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Even Solomon, as rich as he was, and I don't care how many movies they depict him as wearing a bunch of colors, Solomon wore a plain white, white robe, robe and was one of the richest men in the whole world. You understand that? But he didn't have on a bunch of plaids and golds today. He put on a robe for the priest. He put on a dress for the temple, but he wore white. 30. Wherefore, if a law so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? He says he lets roses blossom and make them beautiful, makes grass grow and makes it beautiful just for a seasonal thing. You're not seasonal. Wouldn't if he loved them, wouldn't he even love you? Go ahead. Therefore, but he calls us little, he says, oh, oh you little, little faith. Because we don't put our faith in Allah, or Heavenly Father. We put our faith in our job, and in our career, and in our country, and our economic position, and our bank accounts, and all of that. That's what he says. We don't have no faith in him. We have faith in, in, in ourselves, really. Go ahead. Therefore, take no thought, saying... What shall we eat? Like the brother said, where y'all get your food from? <laughs> Go ahead, and? Or, what shall we drink? Where y'all, I, I know, I see there's a lot of people here. I don't know how you provide for all these people. <laughs> or, where with shall we be clothed? <laughs> for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. And if you read the Bible about people in the book of Revelations, about the tabernacle and who's in the tabernacle and who's not in the tabernacle, and it says, give me a read and a rod to count. You know what you find out? It tells you right there that people who don't want to be in the temple have given themselves to Gentiles. Then it tells you right here that the Gentiles are the ones who seek all those things. I can't live in there, man. I can't live like this. I got to have what I feel like eating. I want to eat when I want to eat. I want to go do what I feel like doing. When you talk to people who have gossip, ain't that what they say? Man, the community, you can't do what you want to do and you can't go home when you feel like going in. Go ahead. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Allah knows what we need. He'll provide for us if we can. Go ahead. He'll tell you. But seek ye first the kingdom of Allah and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Don't start stacking money and accumulating wealth for morphs. It tells you right about some morphs and things. Stop worrying about that stuff. Enter the tabernacle, put your faith in Allah, and He'll provide for you. Everything else, He does it for every other creature. He does it for every other animal. He does it for everything He created. He provides. Man is making his own problems because he thinks he can provide for himself. Okay? All right. You want to answer all my questions. Thank you. I have a question uh, concerning uh, uh, Nunkar and uh, Nakir. Go on. Okay. Yes, I'm a little confused about Munkar and Nakir. Mm -hmm. What what are they supposed to do? Okay, I don't have the answer to that question. What do you mean? What are they supposed to do? <laughs> okay, I don't All understand right. what these are. Two angelic beings right. that visit men in the grave. This is a, this is from the writings of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. These are the things that he taught that. When man passes on from this state to the next state, which is which commonly referred to as death, that there be two angels that will visit them when they're in the grave and ask them questions concerning Tawheed to see whether or not they can answer them. But that that's you know that's basically it. That's recorded on them. So um, who makes the final judgment uh, as to who who will go to heaven and hell? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not, not the angel Israel. No, the angel Israel, or Israel is mainly the angel of death. He, he's the soul collector because he was there when man's body was shaped in the garden. From the dust of the ground, when Allah blew the spirit into man and man became a living soul, Israel was that angel used to do that. 
So he will be there when each soul leaves the body. He will not make the decision as to who will go into paradise and who will go into hell. He has no, nothing to do with whatsoever. Like, like in the book of Revelation at the end of it, when John tries to bow down at the feet of the angel Michael, he says to him what? Tells him not to bow down because I am your fellow servant in tribulations. In other words, on Yom al-Akhri, man and angel both will stand before Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Angels are not above men in the eyes of Allah. There's, um, there's a prophet um, who, who was teaching the prophet Elijah and this prophet was uh, living up in the mountains and uh, in the desert. So my question is, uh, who was this prophet? The prophet who was teaching Elijah? Right. Now you gotta, you gotta get that straight because we have Elias, Elijah, we have about five or six different men. Elijah. I know, but there's, there's more than one because Elijah taught somebody named Elias. And I'm saying, and when they translate these names, they all come out to be the same person. The prophet Elijah himself was what they refer to like a Nazarite. He belonged to the Nazarite type of doctrine, much like John the Baptist. Why John the Baptist was his second portion of the spirit. They call him Elijah, they call him Ilya, they call him Elias. We find basically his story in the first book of Kings, right? And the second book of Kings. So that's why I say we have to know which one. There was, there was Elijah of the tribe of Benjamin. You know about him. That's found in the first Chronicles 8, 27. And in Matthew they talk about him. So I, it's very different. As to which Elijah. Elijah is a very touchy subject in the scripture. Believe me or not. He's one of those special, one of those special um, prophets. Mm -hmm. You have been listening to The True Light, sponsored by the original Tents of Kedar, located at 717 Bushwick Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. You are also invited to attend the Questions and Answers class every Sunday from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. in the Hall of Knowledge at 548 Hart Street in Brooklyn, New York. And now, more profound than ever before, the Pamphlets of Peace, authored by the Master Teacher and Spiritual Guide, Es Sayyid El Imam Isa El Hadi El Mahdi covering such topics as who's who on the planet earth, the resurrection, who was noble Drew Ali, who was Jesus' father, who was Marcus Garvey, St. Paul, disciple or deceiver, and much, much more. Also to aid your spiritual growth, we have a beautifully crafted hand-woven prayer rug designed by Es Sayyid El Imam Isa El Hadi El Mahdi. We also have a large assortment of prayer beads, Nubian and Sufi oils and incense. The original tense of Kedar would like for you to write or call us and let us know how the true light has changed your life. Remember, above all things, truth is truth.